All right, folks, we're going to talk about shape in detail now. I know I've left you in a little suspense from the last video. And so the basis for shapes of molecules is given by the VSEPR model. So we're going to talk about shapes of model. VSEPR, V-S-E-P-R, stands for valence shell electron pair repulsion. It basically means that electron pairs around the central atom tend to be as far away from each other as possible. We talk about electron pairs, of course we're talking about valence pairs. So, let me just dive into this by giving some examples. When we did the Lewis structure for methane, it looked like this. We had carbon in the center, and there were four hydrogens around it. Now, what I'm really interested in, kiddos, are these pairs of electrons around the center atom. Do you see that there are four pairs? One, two, three, four pairs around there. There are four pairs around the central atom, carbon and methane. These pairs want to be as far away from each other as possible. They are repelling each other. So they want to have the greatest angle between them that's possible while still being stuck to that carbon atoms. Now, um, are these pairs of electrons bonding or non-bonding? Well, it looks like they're all four pairs are bonding, aren't they? They're all bonded from carbon to hydrogen. All four pairs are. How can these four pairs arrange themselves so that they are as far away from each other as possible? Well, there's a couple of different arrangements that we talked about. We might have the carbon in the center and the hydrogen sort of kind of looking like a cross. Now, if that were the case, that angle right there would be a right angle, wouldn't it? And so with that one, so with that one, and so with that one, we would have a 90 degree angle. I claim they can get farther away from each other than 90 degrees. Take a look at these balloons right here. What I've done is I've taken four balloons and I've tied them together right there in the center. Each of these balloons represents a pair of electrons. They are pushing against each other. They are being as far away from each other as possible. Do they look like they form a cross and are 90 degrees from each other? No, they end up doing this. Now, I'm going to try to draw it here, but it's not the best way to do it. But I have one pair up there, one pair like this, that's the green balloon, that looks like it's going back into the paper, and then this red one's also going back into the paper, and then that blue one looks like it's coming out of the paper, doesn't it? That's what they do naturally. And with carbon in the center there, and hydrogens up here, that's exactly what the methane molecule does. The shape of that is called tetrahedral. Sometimes we call it a tetrahedron. The angle there is not 90 degrees. It's actually greater than 90 degrees. This angle is 109.5 degrees. This angle here, remember, this one's coming out of the paper, is also 109.5 degrees. This angle from this hydrogen down to this hydrogen. I know it looks greater in my drawing here. Remember, this, this one that's shaded is coming out of the paper is also 109.5 degrees. It's an important angle that you need to remember. So the electronic geometry, just looking at the electron pairs around the central atom for methane, is tetrahedral. Whenever there are four pairs bonded to a central atom, the electronic geometry will be tetrahedral. Another name um, used for molecular geometry is shape. So we'll often say, what is the shape of that molecule? And of course, we would say tetrahedral. Now, the bond angle, we already said, is 109.5 degrees, and it's an angle that you should memorize. Each one of the atoms bonded to the central atom here is 109.5 degrees from each other. Now, with that in mind, would methane be polar or nonpolar? Well, what's this? 
Let's decide. To determine this, we look at the bonds and the shape of the molecule. Let's redraw methane with its dipoles. Okay, so we're going to draw the Lewis structure. Here's carbon, hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. Now there's an electronegativity difference there. Let's take a look at that. Carbon is 2.5, hydrogen is 2.1. So there is an electronegativity difference between the two atoms. So each of these bonds is polar. And so we'd have a dipole going from hydrogen towards this carbon, from hydrogen towards this carbon, from hydrogen towards this carbon, and hydrogen towards this carbon. Okay, we end up having four separate dipoles. Now, dipoles, kiddos, are vector quantities. They have magnitude and direction. If we were to add these dipoles together, they would cancel in this case. They would cancel each other out. And because they would cancel each other out, there would be no net dipole remaining. And so we would have a non-polar molecule. So the EN difference between each bond, let's see, carbon was 2.5, hydrogen was 2.1. The EN difference was 0.4. There was a difference. It would be a covalent bond because it's smaller than 1.7. But because of these dipoles canceling each other out, there's no net dipole remaining. And so the molecule methane is a nonpolar molecule. So the shape would be tetrahedral. The bond angle between hydrogen, carbon, and hydrogen anywhere in that molecule would be 109.5 degrees and we would say it would be a non-polar molecule. Okay, let's try that with another one. Let's redraw the Lewis structure for the ammonia molecule. If you remember, ammonia is NH3. So if we redraw that, we have nitrogen bonded to three hydrogens like this with a non-bonding pair above that nitrogen. Now, what's the shape of that? Well, I'm sort of giving it away over here. It does look like a trigonal pyramid, doesn't it? But let's try to figure out why. Let me try to draw this in three dimensions again for you. Looks like we have a pair of electrons up here, a hydrogen going back into the paper here, a hydrogen going back into the paper here, and one coming out of the paper here. And let's put the nitrogen there, kiddos, right in the middle. All right, now, can you imagine that shape? Yeah. There's nothing bonding up here. That's a, a lone pair. There's no hydrogen atom up here. So really, when we're determining the shape of the molecule, we're looking at this part of the molecule. That pair of electrons still exists, but it's, there's no hydrogen atom up there to make it part of the molecular shape. So, how many pairs of electrons are around the central atom? Well, we have one, two, three, four. There are four pairs still. What is the geometry whenever we have four pairs? That's right, tetrahedral. Whether they're bonding or not, they're there, and they're going to be as far away from each other as possible. How many of those pairs are bonding? One, two, three of them are bonding, and we have one non-bonding pair. Now, whenever you end up with this, the molecular shape is trigonal, pyramid. Now, what do you suspect the bond angle is going to be? What's this angle going to be? Remember, this hydrogen to that hydrogen coming out of the paper. You would suspect it to be about 109.5. This hydrogen uh, to this hydrogen, you would also expect to be 109.5 degrees, and this nitrogen to any of the hydrogens would also be the same. So the bond angle there, we would expect it to be 109.5 degrees because we have a tetrahedral electronic geometry. Now it turns, up, turns out that non-bonding electron pairs take up more space than bonding pairs and they end up reducing the expected bond angle by a little more than two degrees. So the angle is actually closer to 107 degrees, not 109.5. And that's because this non-bonding pair up here, it's not being shared between two positive nuclei. It's not being stretched 
like these other three are. And so it takes up a bit more space. And as, and as a result, it pushes the other ones down about two, a little bit more than two degrees than what we'd expect. Now, how about the polarity? Is that polar or nonpolar? Well, let's see. If we drew in our dipoles here, um, they would all be going in towards the nitrogen, right? We'd have a non-bonding pair up here. Now remember, this one here is sticking out of the paper. And these two are sticking back into the paper. And because they're vector quantities, they won't all completely cancel each other because there's nothing up here to cancel it out. So this molecule is considered to be very polar because the dipoles will not cancel each other out. I like to pretend each one of those dipoles that I just drew right here are acting like tiny spaceships pushing or pulling on the central atom. If that central atom moves, it would be polar. If it won't move, then it would be nonpolar. That would mean all the dipoles would cancel each other. So I like to envision these guys being spaceships pushing on that central atom or pulling on it. And if it ends up moving, then it's polar. If it's not, they cancel each other out and it's nonpolar. Okay, here, let's do one more and we'll call it good. Let's do the Lewis structure for water below and hopefully this will clear that up. Um, water, if you remember, has oxygen in the center, hydrogen on the right, hydrogen on the left, and two non-bonding pairs on the oxygen atom. Now once again, that's a correct Lewis structure, but if you use this without changing it a little bit in your mind to determine shape, you're going to mess it up. So let me draw this again for you. Don't I have a pair of electrons up here that aren't bonding? A hydrogen going back into the paper here. A hydrogen going back into the paper here. And then don't I have a pair of electrons that aren't bonding there? So here's my oxygen kiddos right in the center. Hmm. What would you expect this angle to be from this hydrogen to this hydrogen? Yeah, if you said about 109.5 degrees, you're right. Because the electrons, these four pairs of electrons, kiddos, form a tetrahedron. Not all of them are bonding, though. So the electronic geometry, just looking at the electrons, not looking at the hydrogens at all, is tetrahedral. But, since only two are bonding, the molecular geometry, or shape of the molecule, is bent. So do you see how those hydrogens would be bent on the oxygen atom? It would not be linear. Now, we have two non-bonding pairs of electrons, which you guys know take up a bit more space than bonding, pair, bonding pairs. So our suspected bond angle of 109.5 would actually be a bit more than four degrees uh, smaller than that. So the bond angle is actually around 104.5 degrees. That's about four to five degrees shorter than we would expect it to be. All right? Okay, we'll do more of this when we come back with the next video. Hopefully that gave you a good running start and is helping you think about shape, polarity, and bond angle. See you soon, kiddos. Bye-bye.